Hundreds of years ago, the rugged west coast of the continent, now known as North America, was inhabited only by those who lived there for thousands and thousands of years. The journey of British Columbia's notaries public. On April 29, 1792, Captain George Vancouver became the first European to sail into the waters of what is now British Columbia. This single event changed the history of the region forever. It is a dangerous undertaking, exploring this vast, uncharted coastline. Every bay, every inlet, Every rocky shore is a new discovery. We never know what lies ahead. My notary, my legal officer, it is he who took pen to paper to record every accomplishment we have made here in these rugged, unexplored territories. Not long after the news of Captain Vancouver's voyages of discovery on the Pacific coast became public, other explorers and soon-to-be settlers began to arrive. In 1843, the Hudson's Bay Company established Fort Victoria on the island named after the explorer, Captain Vancouver. In the early 19th century, another famous adventurer, Simon Fraser, made way with his men from the outermost reaches of northern BC to the mouth of the river now bearing his name. The two and a half month journey started in the outpost he founded, Fort George, now Prince George, at first in canoes, abandoning the canoes. The arduous adventure finished on foot. Now in the 21st century, British Columbia is a thriving, bustling province full of life, commerce, culture, and recreation. Today, the men and women who are BC's notaries public are an integral part of our life. But as part of history, the notaries were there from the beginning. They have played an important role in society since the dawn of recorded history. They were the scribes, the scriveners, the ones who laid down the Codex Hammurabi, the oldest evidence of recorded law. Well, we know from uh, legislative record, we know from um, uh, some of the history of British Columbia that notaries were first brought in uh, to the colony uh, even before the colony was established back in, in late 1800s. And we know that uh, as the province was uh, developing and people were starting to spread out through the province, there was a need for uh, some of the legal needs to be taken care of. And so the uh, governor of the day brought over uh, the British concept of notaries and uh, to do that kind of legal work and so notaries started to spread out through all of British Columbia into the communities where people needed uh, some legal assistance. The first notary assigned here was Henry Creese in 1823, sworn in by Sir James Douglas, then governor of Vancouver Island. Priest went on to become Attorney General under Governor Seymour. The province's early notaries provided guarantees to the new colonies that their land purchases were valid. There were no banks at the time, so some of BC's first recorded transactions were done by notaries drawing loan and mortgage agreements for lenders. There were notaries in government. Thomas Dufferin Patello. Everyone knew him as Duff. Duff was a notary and an MLA representing the writing of Prince Rupert. He was Minister of Lands for years before becoming Premier. He was there when an ongoing conflict between BC's notaries and BC's lawyers really heated up. It was 1922. I remember it well. That rascal, Alexander Malcolm Manson, a lawyer educated in Ontario and a member of my own Liberal Party, was Attorney General at the time and he introduced a bill to eliminate all notaries. 
eliminate. Fortunately for all of us, his plan failed. The notary survived, but the battle eventually resulted in a compromise, which restricted the geographic areas where a notary could practice. These geographic areas are called seals, and only 323 were allowed under legislation, and a few now belonging to ghost towns. A change in this legislation had been a long-time goal of BC notaries. Feels good to stretch the legs after all these years. I wonder what Victoria looks like now. Maybe I'll have a look around. Ah, it's as beautiful as ever. Ah, the smell of salt air. But in the 1850s, it was the smell of gold that lured men to the BC interior. And notaries, of course, were there to handle the details. In 1858, gold was found along the banks of the Fraser River in the Fraser Canyon north of Yale, triggering an influx of fortune seekers. Within a short time, the mainland was named a crown colony. The Douglas Trail was built and government officials were appointed to keep law and order. A second gold rush within four years led to the construction of the Caribou Wagon Road, linking the Lower Mainland to Barkerville. Seals were issued authorizing notaries to practice in the gold rush towns like Fort Steele and the East Kootenays, documenting claims and property rights and generally providing impartial witness in a time of rapid change. It was a time of great activity and prosperity. During the gold rush, Sir James Douglas appointed government officials to keep law and order. He built the Douglas Trail and the Caribou Wagon Road. He encouraged trade and farming so that the miners would have provision. But with so many rushing to find their fortune, chaos may well have reigned during those heady days were it not for the notaries who carefully documented claims and property rights, providing impartial witness in an emotionally charged time. BC's gold rush towns were thriving, and thus were granted seals authorizing them to employ notaries. Now, of course, those seals go unused, as many of these are ghost towns. Life is fast-paced today, all the more need for notaries. They've seen us through thousands of years of change, from early Babylon and Mesopotamia, on through the Dark Ages and into the light of modern civilization. The notary's reputation for trustworthiness means their documents retain a stable reliability through centuries of upheaval. Of all the roles in history, that of the notary adapts and reflects changing times like no other. And they continue to change. Before the swiftness of air travel, we moved with the sound of wheels beneath us. And nothing conjures up the sounds of Canadian history like the National Railroad. There is something about a train. The rattle, the hum, the power. And when this track was being laid across the country, who do you think was documenting and recording this historical event for us all? Yes, the notary public. These days, the railway joins the country, but notaries do not thrive in every province. In 1885, the last spike of the Canadian Pacific Railway was driven in Kregelaki. Mining was a growing industry, followed by fishing, forestry and farming. It would seem there was plenty of work for lawyers and notaries in the province. And for the notaries at least, there was no hint of the trouble that lay ahead. Joan Brockman, Professor, School of Criminology, Simon Fraser University, Burnaby, BC. Well, it's interesting because up until about 1920, they actually lived in harmony with the lawyers. And I tried to figure out why that was. And I think there were a number of reasons. One was, um, Mr. Justice uh, Begbie was in charge, and his preference was to have English-trained lawyers, and he didn't particularly care for Canadian or American-trained lawyers. So I think that the pool of lawyers to cover British Columbia was even smaller because of his preference for English-trained lawyers. Another advantage giving notaries special value in a geographically diverse province was their willingness to travel and work in isolated areas. Also, British Columbia, as you know, is very rug rugged. Uh, the terrain is such that you can't really move around as easily as you could, for example, in Saskatchewan. And um, the mining and the fishing was all done sort of in smaller centers. And so there weren't enough lawyers to go around. And as soon as you don't have enough lawyers to go around, you have other people who take it over. So I think that was another driving force. 
And also, I think to some extent, they, they split up the jurisdiction because notaries would work for more of the underprivileged people. Uh, some of them were working to naturalize the Japanese so they could get fishing license and work in the mines, and the lawyers weren't prepared to touch that kind of work. Today, notaries continue to serve BC's marine communities. Rhoda Witherly, based in Prince Rupert, says it's important that clients know the difference between her work and that of a lawyer. Notaries are limited in what they're allowed to do. They, and it's very specific in the Notaries Act of British Columbia and it outlines the areas that you can practice in. And it's illegal to practice outside of those areas. So that's the basic difference. And so I certainly tell clients that what it entails is that notaries can do most of what would be solicitor work, um, contracts, real estate, that sort of thing. But basically anything that entails going to court, you don't do. Notaries in British Columbia for decades had assisted people with other non-contentious legal needs, such as the incorporation of small companies and the probate of estates. The right to conduct this work was taken away by the courts when the lawyers launched a challenge through the judicial system. Surveys conducted throughout British Columbia indicate that the public preferred dealing with notaries in these areas of their lives. Sometimes the work takes a notary to remote areas, where seeing a client might mean taking a float plane or a boat, as Rhoda Witherly found when she took a seal in the maritime community of Prince Rupert. Some of the things we do are slightly different. We do attend to that community, whether they're uh, ship's captains who have had to, uh, you know, had a very tough voyage coming over from, from the Far East. They often have to swear affidavits. You might go out to the ship to see you know, to take their to take their affidavit and to take their declaration. Uh, we also have a number of small native communities around Prince Rupert, and there's a lot of float plane service to to those areas. So it's possible you could go there. And also, the Queen Charlotte Islands is a natural part of really of the Prince Rupert. Uh, so I have a lot of clients that are on the Queen Charlottes, and so it, it's a bit larger than just your small small Prince Rupert area. So it makes it very interesting and different. You can certainly do as much of that as you choose to do. So it uh, always adds a little variety and spice to working. More than one third of BC notaries are involved in fundraising and social service. More than a third in business associations and more than 30% in youth sports and recreation. Wherever you go in any community, and even if in the large center uh, centers, the notaries still are involved. They're involved in their communities. They're involved with uh, uh, their children, whatever their children events are, whether it's sports or uh, girl guys, boy scouts, uh, boys clubs, girls clubs, whatever. Their school activities, notaries are there and uh, are, are tremendous volunteers. Victoria notary Rob Ellington often steps out of this office and finds himself volunteering in his community. My community involvement has been a lot of, a lot of it's been in sports, you know, with my two boys, in, you know, baseball and uh, lacrosse and, and hockey. I was, you know, really involved in hockey and um, I was a board of director, director in the Minor Hockey Association and, you know, involved with their teams as manager and trainer and so a lot of that stuff I really enjoyed and a lot of our friends are from there and so it's been, yeah, I mean, to see him get to this point so far, it's been exciting. Uh, you know, he's 18 years old, uh, plays in the Western Hockey League, just got drafted by the Vancouver Canucks, which is huge. I mean, that was my team for, since their inception in 72, I think it was. And, and uh, you know, that's his team as well. So, yeah, it's been an exciting year. They also give to community groups assisting the disabled, the elderly, those living with poverty and illness and organizations dealing with mediation, restorative justice, and dispute resolution. Many of our notaries, uh, uh, not only in the rural communities, but also in the city communities, when uh, someone's loved one is in the hospital, they're sick, and uh, they may need a, their power of attorney, they may need their, their last will and testament uh, changed or, or even <laughs> done, some people will leave it. Uh, our notaries will attend at the hospital, they'll attend at the care homes, and uh, it's one of the things that really uh, makes notaries uh, uh, acceptable in their communities, why people will use them in the communities because they do do that type of work. Each year, the Society receives more than 1,600 application inquiries from the public. On average, 20 to 25 students per year are selected. 
our education program is such that uh, a person must have a, uh, a bachelor's degree first of all, they must have uh, at least five years experience in some related industry, uh, two hours, and then uh, it's a two-year program through Simon Fraser University. Uh, and then there's six government examinations uh, for the person to write and pass. Uh, those exams are set by attorney general examiners and uh, then if they can get past all of that, then the court will commission them as notaries in and for the province of British Columbia. Notarized documents retain a stable reliability through years, even centuries. It's a concept that endures today in the motto of the self-governing Society of Notaries Public of British Columbia, a trusted tradition. Trust is very important for us. Um, it's whether we're dealing with a client in our office, on the phone, by email, whether it's with our staff, with us, or anybody that we deal with, trust is very, very important. It's, it's, it's the foundation of everything that we do. Well, the best part of, of being an order for me is, is the, uh, the wonderful people that we get to meet. Um, there's a wide variety of people from all different backgrounds, all different cultures. And, you know, we have people just moving into the country, moving into the province, and even moving across the street. So it's great to be able to facilitate that for them. And it's, it's such a rewarding feeling. Just, you know, they've signed with me and then they say, hey, we actually own the house now. And that's like the coolest feeling in the world for me. Um, the distribution of seals was set long time ago in the 50s and it's sort of out of whack with the way the population is set right now so hopefully there will be a shift in that as well. Akash Sablon, who found an available seal when he completed his notary training in 1998, tells his story. My father's been a notary actually since 1977 and as a young child I used to come into his office, I didn't, half of the stuff I didn't know what was going on and we used to come out help with the, you know, the cleaning up of the files and stuff like that and we get a chocolate bar as, as our reward, right? But uh, it was just so cool, again, to see people walk into my dad's office, you know, the smiles on their face, and then walk out, and it, it was, that was really neat. And then as I got older, I started to understand what was going on, and uh, I got more and more involved. And then I started helping out my dad as much as I could in the office, and in 1995, I decided to take the course. And um, took the course, and in 1998, I became a notary. This young notary's practice differs from his father's early days due largely to giant leaps in technology. In fact, the centuries-long history of notaries, which began with handwritten records and evolved to typewriters and eventually computers, has entered a new era in which documents can be recorded on digital media and transmitted directly to the registry from the offices of notaries, lawyers, and surveyors. We as notaries, I think we're, we're sort of at the cutting edge of technology as far as what we do in our office um, as electronic filing EFS, um, a scanning of documents, uh, transmission of documents between offices. We're quite ahead of the, the curve, if you say. And in fact, we're quite ahead in, in the rest of Canada as well. I've speaking to even notaries in the U.S. and lawyers in the U.S. and they're not even using some of the systems we're using. Since its colonization, BC has relied on multicultural immigration to feed the various sectors of society from past to present. From homesteading, resource harvesting and development, transportation and technology. The notaries have always been an integral part of this passage through time, and they reflect today's complex multicultural society through their membership. The average age of a BC notary is 43. 55% are women. The notaries of British Columbia have guided us through our history with courage and dignity, overseeing our adventures and notarizing our achievements. Today, they continue that legacy of service and dedication to their centuries-old profession and to the communities in which they live, building on a trusted tradition. All history, for all time, will know where we've been, what we have seen, what we have claimed. Uh, it can be treacherous work for all of us. Some do not return. Christopher Columbus's notary lost his life at Hispaniola during the 1492 voyages. However, the records he so meticulously kept live on.